I was trying to come up with a way to explain the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform, and I came across this thing called the Weierstrass transform. Suppose you had a thin metal plate sitting on the x-axis with variable density that depended on x. You could divide the metal plate up into a bunch of vertical strips and then add up the mass of each vertical strip in order to get the total mass of the plate. This graph here is a representation of the Weierstrass transform or the Gauss-Weierstrass transform. The red curve is the density and the gray curve is the metal plate. What makes it the Weierstrass transform or the Gauss-Weierstrass transform is that I have used this bell curve shape to be the density. And the total mass depends on where I position this bell curve. So if I slide the bell curve over here, then I should get a big total mass because I'm making the, the large parts of the metal plate heavy. And if I slide the curve over here, then I should get a small total mass because I'm making the small part, parts of the plate heavy. So I think right here, it does make sense that we're gonna get a large total mass because I've made a tall part of the graph heavy. You can see that the metal plate has this kind of sharp ending, right? It sort of suddenly ends right there. As I slide the density function off, the, the total mass does go down, but it goes down in kind of a smooth way. It doesn't drop off suddenly. As I slide this through, the blue bar goes up and down. So for each position of the density function, I get a different total mass. In fact, I've graphed them here. You can see as I position the density function right there, I get a very big total mass, so the blue curve is high. And then this is really the fantastic behavior right here. Even though the original graph has a very sharp corner, when I take the Weierstrass transform of that graph, I get a kind of smooth transition right there. I have another couple of examples that illustrate this behavior. The name of the, this graph of this metal plate is called the Heaviside function. It's named after Oliver Heaviside. And you can see it is very sharp, right? There is no, there's nothing about this metal plate that's smooth at all. And as I start to pass this uh, density function over the metal plate, even though the density function hasn't gone into the metal plate yet, I do already have some mass because this little piece of it right there is in the metal plate. So this is as heavy as you could possibly make it. All of the density curve is inside that little rectangle. And then as I slide it off there, the total mass is going to fall down. So this curve right here is the uh, Weierstrass transform or the Gauss transform form of this function. You can see the original function had a bunch of very sharp corners in it. It was a really square bump there. And then after you transform the function, you get this kind of like nice smooth bump. This is kind of a fun graph. It's called a sawtooth wave or a sawtooth curve. Right here, I'm going to get more and more mass and then the mass is going to drop down, but you can see that the, the total mass drops down in a smooth way, not in a sharp way like the original curve does. There's the original graph, and there is the Weierstrass transform of this graph. So it has this really fantastic effect of taking a, a really pointy curve that has sharp corners and kind of smoothing it out. I wanna apply the same kind of reasoning uh, except now, instead of having a density function that's shaped like a bell curve, I have a density function that's shaped like a wave. I only call this the Fourier transform. It may seem a bit weird that I'm allowing for negative density, but that does make sense, especially if you were calculating total charge. It makes sense for, for total charge to be negative. Instead of just imagining my wave sliding left and right across the curve, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine sliding through the frequency. So as I slide through, instead of increasing the position of the density function, I am increasing the frequency of the density function. Okay, so let me pull up a wave and let's see what happens when I use this density function to calculate the total mass of a, of a wave shape. So in this first instance, the computer is calculating the total mass as being zero. And that makes sense because this graph is so symmetric, right? The wave goes up and down and then the density goes up and down and it's also symmetric. All the positive masses cancel out with the negative masses. And then as I slide the frequency through, okay, so at this place, the computer is telling me that there's gonna be negative total charge or total mass here. And then as I slide it through a little bit more, we get positive again, and then maybe it'll go back down to be negative. Now, here's the really interesting thing. Watch what happens when the frequency of the density function matches exactly with the frequency of the wave. So I'll just slide this over so that they get very close. And you can see now this total mass is getting very, very large. And you can see that the, the positive parts of the plate have positive mass and the negative parts of the plate have negative mass. And so that produces the biggest total mass possible. 
let's look at the original frequency of this wave. So I see one, two, three total waves. So the frequency of this wave is three. And then when I pull up the Fourier transform of this wave, so right there at the number three, I get a spike because the total mass was the largest when the density curve and the actual like wave curve lined up perfectly. So this is fantastic. If you had some kind of mystery wave that you didn't understand, uh, and you didn't know what the frequency of your wave was, what you could do is scan through with these various uh, frequencies and then when, and calculate the total mass. And then whenever the total mass spiked, you would know that that had to be the frequency of your wave. Okay, poor Desmos has to do a lot of math in order to spit out these Fourier transforms. Right now I have set the frequency of the original wave to be 1.5 and you can see there's one and a half total curves happening. And you can see in the Fourier transform of this wave, there is a spike right there at 1.5. So let's try some other ones. Let me bump this up to four total cycles. And let's see, there should be a spike right at four. Let's see, there it is right there. So in the Fourier transform of this wave, there is a big spike right there. So you can, you can use this like sweeping through the density with a bunch of different frequencies as a way of kind of analyzing your wave. And wherever there's a spike in the Fourier transform, that means that there, there must have been that frequency present in your original wave.